everyone and welcome back to Stampin' Squirrels. This is Debbie here, Squirrel One. And this is the third card from me about our hot dog card kit to go class. And we're going to be showing you today how to make this great twist and fold card like this. And we're not going to be using any of the little woofers that's in this stamp set. What we're going to be doing is focusing on this tiny little envelope here. And I thought it was really topical at the moment because we're all not being in lockdown, we're not being able to see anybody, so I'm often sending cards to people just to keep in touch. And so I've teamed it with the new Snailed It, the new Snail To Go kind of DSP. I'm loving it, I love the colours. Um, and I thought it went really, really well with this particular card. So it's got some little envelopes in it and things like that. So I thought it teamed teamed really well. So yeah, I'm going to be using that paper, but we're going to be concentrating on using this little envelope. Uh, and I guess the feature of the card is this great little fold, twist and fold here. So yeah, here's another one that I've done where I've got the three envelopes on the front. I miss you, it's been too long. So yeah, love this. This is a great little card. So let's get started, shall we? Pop that off to one side. Right, so to start with, you are going to need a piece of DSP. That is, no, I'll say that again, a piece of cardstock. And I have used Daffodil Delight here. And it's five and a half by eight and a half, okay? And it's scored at four and a quarter. And the reason that you can see that it's cut already is because obviously I want to demonstrate to you how to make this great little flip fold. Okay, and I don't want to spend too much time to do it, so I don't want to go away to my cutting machine and show you. So for now, just pretend that that's a solid piece of card, just like so. All right, great. So you've got a piece of cardstock there, five and a half by eight and a half, and then you need to score it at four and a quarter. And then you need a piece of uh, white card, big enough to take the largest stitched nested die. So that's that, and if I hold that up there, that is 13 and a half centimetres by eight centimetres. So you need a piece that big. I flip the paper over, although I give it to you in inches. And then you're gonna need two pieces of white, which will accommodate this size nested die, which is about 11 and a half by six centimetres. So you need two pieces of white card that will accommodate that. And then what you're going to end up with is that so you need two smaller ones one larger one okay all right so you've got your piece of larger DSP and now you need two pieces of DSP two pieces of this which measures one and seven eighths by five and five eighths and your larger piece of DSP measures three and three quarters by five and five eighths so don't forget you need two pieces of this Okay, so you've got your white stock, you've got your DSP, and really, that's all you need for now. So if you take back your card base, you've scored it at four and a quarter, fold it in half, and then what you're going to do is you're going to score it here at two and one sixteenth of an inch. So score on this side at two and one sixteenth of an inch, and then you're going to fold it back. And I'm sorry that this one's already um, got some paper on, etc. But uh, I was preparing this and I got ahead of myself, so I'm really sorry. Um, but what I can tell you is you score this at 2 and 1 16th and fold it back. So essentially you have this shape. Okay? This double backs on itself. Alright? Now before you cut it, you need to take your front piece, your smaller piece of DSP, this goes on this panel here, like this. And you're going to adhere this down onto this panel. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to put any glue on this side here. This side must remain without any adhesive, and you'll see why in a moment. So take your glue, glue it down on the three sides, and then stick it down. And then what you'll be left with is you'll be left with a fold that's got this DSP on the front like this. Okay? That's how it'll look. Now, what you then do, and this is where you need your die cutting machine, is that you take the smallest, the smaller of the two nested dies that I've shown you, 
and you're going to place that so that the tips here of this die go on the very fold edge. Now you're probably wondering how you're going to put that through the die machine and it not cut all the way through. Well here's the tip, okay? You line that up so it's centralised and you're pretty happy with it, like that. And you're going to put it through the die machine. But what you're going to do is only put the plate up to that point. You're not going to put the plate all the way over. So I'm just going to find a little plate on my mini to try and demonstrate this. So if I was putting this through my cutting machine, I know these are smaller plates but it helps to demonstrate it. I'm going to put it onto my cutting plate like normal. I'm going to line that up so I'm happy with it. The points are exactly on the fold mark. And then I'm going to put this plate only up to those two points. So it will only cut this part of it out. It won't cut this part of it out, okay? You're then going to turn and you're going to line it up and put it through your cutting machine. It doesn't matter how you do it, it will have to go this way because once it goes through, you'll hear it go boink and it will come out the other side. And when it comes out the other side, you pull this off. That will come off, as will the DSP on this part, and you will end up with a cut that looks like this. And so when you fold it back over again, you have the basics of the card. You can see this part comes over. And you can see then how that makes the twist and pop. So I'm just going to go through that one more time just so that you've got it clear. You've got your piece of DSP stuck on here. You take the smaller of your nested dies. Now I must say that I think this will work whether you use an oval or whether you use a square or a rectangle. But I'm using the nested dies for this that comes with the Bird Ballad Suite. Line up the two points or if you're using a square or a rectangle, half onto the fold line, put it onto your cutting plates and then only put the top cutting plate up to the point you want it to be cut at. So like this. And then you put it through the machine and what will happen is it will drop off and this part won't cut. pop them to one side. So you've got the basic then, here's your twist and fold bit, this bit's got a fold in it but don't worry about that because once you've got the top and the bottom on it all will become clear, that will just disappear and it won't fold anymore or crease I should say like in the middle, okay? So what you can do now is you can go ahead and you can stick your other piece of DSP down like this. And you can stick the inside piece of your DSP down as well. All right, so here comes the decoration. So remember these two pieces that you've cut out. If you fold the card over, you will see that this fits now perfectly onto this piece. And if you turn that over, this part, will stick on the back of it, like so. So, but before we do that, I'm going to stamp it. So I'm going to bring back my original card. And what I've done is I've stamped the background with the envelope, the mini envelope, that tiny, lovely little thing. I've stamped the whole background with that. And then the inside, I've stamped some buttons and we've pushed them out. So I'm going to do one at a time. So the first bit, I'm going to take the So Saffron no, I beg your pardon, Daffodil Delight. And I'm just going to stamp it all over. Okay, like that is my background. Pop that to one side. Um, and I'm just going to pop that away. And now I'm going to take a piece of spare white card and I'm going to print some just black envelopes. So you'll see that on the front I've just got one little envelope and on the inside I've got two. So I need three black envelopes. So I'm just going to give my stamp a little clean quickly. Bring my 
my memento ink in. Now I'm going to punch these out, so make sure you leave a space between them. Okay. And I just want an added little effect for my envelope, so you don't have to do this, but I'm going to just take a blender pen, the light smoky slate, I'm just going to gently exacerbate those lines. And you can see there that I've gone over the line there, so I'm just going to take my razor pen, just try and rub that out a little bit, that's better. Smash in, and what I also wanted to do is pick up the colours of this DSP or in my case here, the yellow, with my pens. Now you can use stamping markers, you can use watercolour pencils, you can use anything that you've got, a little bit of watercolour if that's what you've got to hand, but you only need a tiny little bit of colour, anything you've got to hand, and just colour in some of those hearts. Great. And so what I've got is three punches. Now these are retired, some of these, so I can't get them anymore, but I don't know about you, but I completely hoard my punches. I never throw a punch away, ever. No punch left behind, that's my, my motto. So I'm just gonna punch out each of those envelopes with the smallest of circles, three quarter of an inch. That's lovely. So there's our three envelopes, that's fantastic. Lovely, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a little bit of spare scrap colour in uh, the Coastal Cabana, uh, Bermuda Bay, uh, Real Red, and a little bit of Daffodil Delight so I can just back these up and trim them up. So I found a bit of scrap now, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch out, this is 7 eighths of an inch and it's the scallop punch one in each colour and what I'm doing is I'm just picking up the colours in the DSP alright and then coming back finally to the last circle I want a one inch circle so it's a one inch punch and I'm just punch those out in white Fabulous. So there we've got our three circles, we've got our three scallops, and we've got our three. Like that. So now what we're just going to do is stick them together and I'm going to stick the scallop down onto the white one inch circle with just glue and then I'm going to put a little dimensional underneath that one. All right, so that's that bit. So that's ready now for our decoration. So the next bit is we're going to bring back this, the bit that we stamped, do you remember, at the beginning. So we're gonna stick that and adhere that to the front flap. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can kind of poke it in and line it up. Now, unless you are absolutely accurate, you will not have made that so that it was completely square. I've not, I've yet to do a single one of them that makes it completely square because what you have to do is that that has to slot into there. Now if I fold that over you will see when I fold it over that it's it's out slightly but don't worry about it because your other one will fit onto the back and it will look perfectly normal, perfectly all right. So what we're just going to do is I'm just going to take some glue and I'm going to put some glue down on that and then stick it down. And then I'm going to flick that one over and I haven't decorated it yet and I'm going to put the other one on the back once we've decorated it. So let's take the other one. On the card that I've got here is I've, I've got two other sentiments from the hot dog stamp set. So on the hot dog stamp set we've got these little 
voice, you know, kind of things pop up. How, how are you? And hi. And I'm going to use both of those. And so I think I'm probably going to stamp Coastal Cabana. And this time I'm going to go real red on the inside. So I'm going to do the high first. Hi! And then because the speech bubble lower down, I just want to make sure I'm going to get these lined up so that they don't overlap each other. So if I do that, and then this one says, how are you? So I want it about there. There, it's smashing. Pop those away, because knowing me, I'll put my elbow, etc., in all of them. Great. So that's the inside. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could give that a little bit of a sponge around the outside. I've got these new blending brushes. If I wanted to, I could just blend all around the outside. I'm not going to sponge today. Many of you will gasp in wonder, but there you go. So on the front, I'm going to be doing a little bit more stamping and punching in a minute, but on the front, I'm going to just use one of these and I think I'm probably going to use, let me just check, I do yellow, yellow and red on the inside and go with the Coastal Cabana on the front, I think. Yeah, okay, that's lovely. So that's great. So I'm just gonna stick these down on the back And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this one down as well. And I'm, but I'm going to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the one from the other side. And therefore you don't get any sight that that hasn't lined up perfectly with your cutout shape. It just will look like it has perfectly. So it's glue all over on this bit. Great. Right. And there. That's the inside. So let's concentrate now on decorating the front of the card. So I know I'm already going to put this little fella here. What else have I got that I've got I want to put on it? So this is the new ombre, it was part of the celebration DSP. I've got two tiny little scraps of DSP. Now you can make them as big or as small as you like. Um, I'm just going to pop, pop them sort of like this. I've got a little piece of Daffodil Delight ribbon, the stitched ribbon, which is perfect colouring. I'm just going to tie that into a bow. And I'm also going to use a piece of scrap white again, and I'm just going to stamp this time with the bon Bonjour, which I love, and I'm going to stamp that in the real red. And now for this, you can either punch this out, you can cut it out, it depends entirely on your preference. I've got a really old punch, the word punch, that I love. Why didn't I put it out? Just grab that from my stash. Uh, it's retired, long retired now, but I can't get rid of it. Again, no, no punch left behind. Um, I love it. And it's going to be perfect for this. But if I didn't have this, I would just cut this out with some snips and make it square. Okay, and you can see that things are starting to take place now. So, these two I want to shape. And I'm just going to do that by taking some snips. For this one, I'm just going to snip slightly up to the corner. So it's got an angle. Like this. And for this one, I want to move this slightly over. And I want that to have a pointed arrow head. So you kind of take it from the centre and make your own arrow head. Now, you can use one of the Stamping Up punches if that's what you've got. I do have them, but for ease and speed, I'm not going to. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick those down. Oh. 
and then in comes my bone jaw and I'm going to raise that up on a couple of mini dimensionals Um, I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight and I'm going to just make a tiny little bow quickly. Lovely. So this one's going to stick down onto here. And then we're just going to take our glue dots. Or you can use wet glue. You could use a dimensional. pop it on the back and that's going to go here and that's quite nice because it's going to completely cover up the fact that I didn't get that even use the difficulty Deborah all right so there it is now I've just got one last thing to finish this off and I spoke about these in my last video and that is the new resin heart embellishments from stamping up I've I've used these a lot, I think they're really great, but I'm gonna show you a little tip that I've worked out. So they come in red and white, but you don't have to just have them that color. The white ones lend themselves perfectly to being colored in. So whether you've got a stamping right marker, whether you've got an ink pad, whether you've got blending pens, whatever you've got, you can color them in. So I'm just gonna take this light Bermuda Bay and I'm gonna color that in like that and it just well takes on the color like that and I'm well happy because that means that you can correspond these so that they're any color you want them to be oh, I think I'll go for a dark red here we go I've already got a red I don't know why I'm doing that just ignore what I've said there Let's go yellow, let's go yellow. Look at that, absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna hold that up to show you. So there, you've got colors, any color you want, just by using your pens. And so I'm gonna use those though, and I'm gonna place some of those hearts on the envelopes. So, that's it. That's my Bonjour hot dog card using the mini micro envelope with the love heart in. And I've just matched it up with the snail mail DSP, which I think is made for it. Absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna show you that fold again. Great flip card and really easy. And like I said, I'm pretty certain, I haven't done it, but I'm pretty certain this will work. That kind of fold will work for any square or rectangle or oval or circle. Here's one I made previously. Oh, I forgot a very fundamental, <laughs> very fundamental part of the card making. The inside for you to write your greeting. So it's really simple. All you do is you line this up with the fold line. Make sure it's in the center like that and then you're going to stick it down so this is how I do mine I glue the back I fold it down I line it up without pushing it down and then when I'm happy I just push it down like that and there it is what I would say is if you were writing this as a card and sending it to someone which obviously that's why you're making it try and keep your writing slightly to the left just so that it doesn't go, keep it underneath this so that it doesn't spoil the sort of the effect of the card when you make, you know, when your when your friend or whoever you send it to receives it. So they don't see the writing, it's only when they open it that they'll see the writing. You could, of course, also write on this part if you wanted to do that. So there you have it. That is my bonjour hot dog combo envelope card using a mixture of Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, and Real Red. 
And that concludes Squirrel 2's part of the Hot Dog Kit Cast cards. Can't say that very quickly. And Squirrel 1 will be along very shortly to do her three cards to show you. Uh, and let's hope we haven't overlapped. But knowing Squirrel 1, I'm pretty certain we won't have chosen the same thing. So I'll be very interested to see. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It's been a delight. Come back again and visit Stamping Squirrels really soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.